I'm Marilyn Hamilton. I'm the founder of Integral City Meshworks and the author of the Integral City book series. And I'm delighted to be with you today to explore the future of cities. And I want to share with you some of the ideas and the frameworks and how I imagine a living, evolutionary, integral city and even a planet of integral cities can come into existence. So in order to support me today, I have created a presentation on PowerPoint and I'll share that with you on my screen. So one of the ways we can think about a future that is not dystopic is to consider how we could co-create thriving human habitats. The three books that I have created in the series of Integral City started with the first one looking at the evolutionary intelligences of the human hive. The second one was looking at how inquiry and action design impact for the human hive using action research. And the third one, Integral City 3.7, is reframing complex challenges for Gaia's human hives. And I titled it 3.7 in order that we could think about the seventh generation from now. The qualities of an integral city include, it's a meta framework, so it's including many other frameworks like smart cities or resilient cities or many of the other discourses. The way that I think about cities is they are human systems. They are the most complex human systems yet created by our species. They're living, they're complex, they're adaptive. I also see them as being eco-regionally contexted. So you can't think about a city without understanding the region in which it ecologically is situated. These cities are emergent. They're integral in the sense that we think of them as a whole. And in that sense, they're holographic. They're also fractal with repeating patterns at different scales. I believe, obviously, from the first book that these cities are intelligent and have multiple intelligences. An integral city is really a social holon. So it's not a monad. We have to consider that it's dynamic with multiple scales of human systems nested within them. I think that integral cities are purposeful. Every city has a purpose. For the most part, our cities now, those purposes are implicit, not yet explicit. They also, I would say, are a form of meshwork. They've emerged from human systems interacting in both self-organizing ways and also structuring ways that thus create a meshwork. I already mentioned in many ways, the integral city must consider multiple scales. So they're multi-scalar. And in fact, when we're considering this, we will look at multiple scales of human habitat themselves. I think integral cities on a planetary scale are naturally networked both within the city and what's emerging is between and amongst cities, kind of like mycelium uh, networks. Also, an integral city is evolutionary. So its dynamics are constantly changing and we're emerging development and evolution within the cities. In addition to the three books that I have published around integral city series, I also recently curated a book in the Urban Hub series produced by integral mentors and Paul Van Shaik. We called this Urban Hub 20 and synchronistically it was the first issue out of 2020 for this series. Um, Urban Hub 20, we titled Accelerating City Change in a VUCA World. VUCA is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And when we're thinking about the city change, we're thinking about how does it transform from where it is today into the kind of future of city that we're going to look at today. This little book is free and I will give you the links to it uh, so that you can download it yourself. It's actually the culmination of a fantasy that I've had over the years, over the two decades that I've been involved in the integral movement and thinking about integral city. There are many other integrally informed practitioners who have emerged in the world. And as they've emerged, they tend to be scattered all around the globe at the moment. But I've been wondering what would happen if we brought them all together 
to think about, act in, behave with, and co-create in a single city? Could we actually accelerate city change? And so this little urban hub book brings together over 20 of such practitioners. And when I curated it, I curated it with the Master Code of Care, which we'll come to in a minute. So within this book, you'll find people who are looking at caring for individuals or selves, caring for collectives or groups or collections of people uh, and organizations, caring for places, and caring for planet. So that's the master code in a nutshell, caring for self, others, place, planet. And that's how this book is curated. I mentioned that I would give you the links to that, and they're included on a set of download links that are with this PowerPoint. I will send it to the university so that you all have access to this and that you'll be able to see some of the activities that we participate in on an ongoing basis, not only the Urban Hub series, but we also annually award an Integral City of the Year. In a minute, I will tell you about Amsterdam, but there is a link to the blog where that award summarizes the 12 intelligences that Amsterdam lives and demonstrates. We also have a mighty network that we deliver and connect and curate with Nest City, who is one of our community of practice. Recently, we've been participating in the Humanity Rising Summit, and we had three contributions that we made before they took a summer recess. And so the links are all there for day 20, day 56, and day 57, where we looked at some different aspects of cities than what we'll even cover today. Looked at whole systems change, we looked at healthy human habitats, and also regenerative economics. In the fall of 2020, we're very happy to announce that with Ubiquity University, we will be launching the Beyond Resilient course. And if you wish to go on and earn credits, this course is worth three credits. But you can also audit it without taking the credits, and we'd love to have you there. The link for that course is also on this page, as is the link to our basic course, Beyond Smart Online. And we will be delivering that again in November with the partnership of Findhorn College. The other links are to the website, which is extensive and has got the archives from, I would say, probably 20 years of work around Integral City right up to current blogs and newsletters. We have a LinkedIn connection. We also have Facebook and Twitter. So we hope to see you on any of those connections. Now. Before we launch into our discussion for today, it's always wonderful to have some questions about how we could co-create solutions for thriving human habitats. We want to ask how, how does Integral City explore solutions at multiple scales that can embrace eco-villages, cities, eco-regions, and the whole planet? We also wonder how can we explore to build connections and feedback loops within and across human habitats to create well-being at both a local and a planetary scale. So as I put this session together, those were some of the questions that were in the back of my mind, and I share them with you so that you can be thinking about them as I share the presentation. You know, I mentioned all of the people that I curated entries for in the Urban Hub book Urban Hub 20, which incidentally is a graphic book. So it is not just a, a narrative text as in my other books, but is a graphic book and quite fun and delightful to read because of that. Well, in addition to all of those uh, colleagues, uh, communities of practice, um, I've also been inspired over the years by people I would call field setters. These people have impacted, created the field in which Integral City can emerge. The first one I'm pointing to is Jim Garrison, who has been the co-founder of Humanity Rising and the host, and also the co-founder of Ubiquity University. I also have been inspired by Jean Houston, not only for the possible human, but her work with archetypes, and I am honored to be a sage that has been blessed by Jean's great insights into how elders in the community can give back 
at this stage of our emergence as a human species. Gail Taylor has picked up my work around meshworking and for many years has started to talk about scaffolding. So I think in many ways that's what Integral City does. It not only creates a meta framework, but a meta set of scaffolds that can be the ways that we manage to bring into being our meshwork of the city. Early on, I was inspired by Elizabeth Zatouris, who talks about living systems. And you will see today that in fact, the core of the presentation has been inspired by her 17 qualities of a living system. She and I met and discovered very early on that Elizabeth thinks about a cell as a small city. I think about the city as a small cell. So we recognized right away that each of us was using a fractal image of the other. Elizabeth and Hearn has been inspired as I have been by James Lovelock, whom I will introduce a little bit more fully in a minute. David Lorimer is somebody who's looked at whole worldviews and spirituality and brings a lot to my ways of thinking about cosmology, as does Jude Curavan. Her holographic cosmology and how she is bringing it forward in unity worldviews on a World Unity Week and World Peace Week is something that challenges us to think cosmic, feel global, and act local. Hans Ondebeg and Peter Mary have also influenced me through their work in eco-intention, in aligning the energies of our human systems at multiple scales. World economics and donut economics are very alive as we bring this presentation to you today. World economics being thought of through regenerative economics, and many panels are gathering to see both new alternative currencies, um, the circular economies, uh, and many ways for us to completely rethink our traditional economics. And of course, Kate Rayworth's donut economics is also following in the tracks of the Integral City Award in Amsterdam and starting there to bring the donut economics to the world. James Lovelock, let me come back to him because I heard James Lovelock being interviewed some years ago and he was being challenged that humans are not very beneficial for Earth. And he said, on the contrary, humans are Gaia's reflective organs. And as I was listening to the interview, I got a really huge intuitive hit where I realized that from the perspective of integral cities, the cities themselves are Gaia's reflective organs and our organizations within them are her organelles and we as individuals are her cells in those organs. So James Lovelock not only influenced Elizabeth Satouris, as I already mentioned, he also directly influenced me. When I want to share the different frameworks and tools and practices of an integral city, I often start with the GPS. So the GPS comes out of the 12 intelligences of the human hive, and these intelligences are set in a GPS. The GPS is run in the center by the evolutionary intelligence that acts like its prime energy or prime directive. And surrounding that evolutionary intelligence are the inner and outer intelligences of individuals and the cultural and social intelligences of the collective. There you can see the integral four quadrants nestled around the evolutionary intelligence. In the second bezel of this GPS are the strategic intelligences, intelligences of inquiry, navigating, and meshworking. And then surrounding that in the third bezel are the intelligences that are contexting. They are ecological, emergent, integral, and living. So altogether, you will find there that there are 12 intelligences of the human hive. Next, let's think about and introduce the four voices of the integral city. These four voices are the citizens, the civic managers, the business innovators, and civil society. And you'll see that they are actually aligned with the four quadrants of the integral model. And this is not accidental. So if we had 
time in another course, we would go more deeply into what are the qualities of each of those voices. But we will hear from them today in what I have to share with you. You'll notice <clears throat> this slide says four plus one voice. So the plus one voice is the voice from the other human hives that every one of our cities associates with. So 12 intelligences, four plus one voices of the human hive. And <clears throat> I already mentioned the master code. So here we have a image of the master code for person, people, place, and planet. The master code says that we must care for self, care for others, care for place, care for planet. And when we can align all those ways of caring, in fact, I would say that's the seeds for the new governance of cities, the, the governance that we will have in the future. So the master code of care along with the voices and the intelligences, along with the ways that we bring those into maps of a city, turn up every year when we think about what city deserves the award of the Integral City of the Year. And in 2019, it was Amsterdam. So you'll find that when you go to the link for this award, that we will say that Amsterdam, as an Integral City of the Year for 2019, is using all four voices has the 12 intelligences incorporated into the conference it's sponsored for two years called We Make the City. And when we make the city, the city makes the planet. And as we emerge a planet of integral cities, I believe we will create a super organism that in fact will act as Gaia's reflective organ system. So, how does this show up not only in places like Amsterdam? Well, uh, shortly after I published book number one, it was translated into Russian in 2014. And out of that work has come a opportunity to influence many cities in Russia, particularly through the association that emerged from Integral Cities Russian translation. It's known as Living Cities Russia. And they have an intention to change 1,000 cities by 2030. How do they imagine doing that? Well, they imagine using the four voices. This seems to be a transcultural phenomenon in cities and human habitats. And you can see on this beautiful graphic that they have here that they also imagine that this will happen through living the master code of care, caring for self, caring for others, caring for place, and caring for a planet of places. So let us now explore the presentation I made for you about imagining thriving human hives as Gaia's reflective organs. Since this is a rather somatic framing, an integral framing that brings in the body and also the heart mind, also the community and organizations, I thought that we would do this in a form of dance. The dance has three acts but it has a couple of um, beginnings. One is an interlude and the other is actually an intermission before we actually get into the three acts in this dance. After the dance, I will also show you how we can take this active imagination and start to actually implement it in an individual city. We'll imagine it's your city. So get comfortable in your chair and activate your organ of imagination. Let us start with the prelude. Here we imagine waking up the human hive. Imagine the city as a human hive, a living organ of Gaia who has a purpose that is in service to Gaia's well being and resilience and is embraced by its citizens. Imagine Human hives who can resource their purpose with internal and external resources and funding. Imagine the human hive as a living innovation ecosystem where we enable the connections between the four voices of the city, citizen, civil society, city and institutional managers, business and innovators. So they not only thrive today, but create a legacy of life conditions 
for the next generations to evolve and thrive. Imagine human hides who know how to connect. They can map their existing connections, align people to purpose and priorities. They can amplify what works and let go of what doesn't and continuously improve the value they contribute to Gaia. Imagine human hives who learn from each other and develop the whole system of human hives in an evolutionary direction. If we can imagine such a city, we can imagine creating and implementing plans for the global scale challenges of pandemic, climate adaptation, energy shift, water management, food security, and cultural evolution. To do so, we can imagine how to release resources now trapped in city sectors, silos, and stovepipes. We can imagine the frameworks, tools, and processes that catalyze new conversations, build on the underlying values, and recalibrate the assets, capacities, and capitals into meshworks of economic, environmental, social, and cultural interests. We can imagine creating the model for community engagement, city development, business strategies, and communication technologies to evolve the intelligences in our cities into thriving human hives. So let us take a breath from that prelude and take a short intermission. Let's imagine Gaia's human hives. I've said that I like to imagine the city as a human hive. And I have done the research to identify the 12 intelligences that a city is as a complex adaptive living system and how it would manifest if it wishes to resiliently survive and evolve. 2020 marks a significant year where I think we will be backcasting from the forward projection of imagining the city as a human hive, as I lay out here. What we need to do to have happen in 2020 is to find the next steps as a human hive so we can emerge the city of the future. I think we need to commit first to the intelligence I call number one, the eco-intelligence. And through that, we need to thread the master code of care for self, others, place, and planet, and see how that will change our individual behavior, relationships with others, respect for our ecology, and aligning our human ethos with the whole life on Mother Earth. I think we will look back on 2020 and witness how the global pandemic became a universal, non-local experience that demanded our acknowledgement of our inextricable interconnectedness with one another and the earth. We will both fear for and care for our families to a deep level of appreciation. We will translate what our children can expect for their legacy into changes in our own behaviors. We will translate our lessons of rapid response from COVID-19 to capacities that sanely respond to climate change and its impact on our shared ecology. In 2020, we will see the extensions of Black Lives Matters, Black Lives Matter, and Me Too movements from individual experience or blame of one race or gender to other races and genders. Those shifts will often be painful but will catalyze our evolving into respect for all humans. We will continue the journey to understanding our fractal relationship to energy, which we massively shifted by lockdown and economic obstruction. Also to information, which has been IT super boosted because of physical distancing, and to matter in the forms of actions, systems, infrastructures, and their undeniable embeddedness in the intelligences of nature. Cosmic holograms will become the new math for our children. 
the blue planet will be the basis for new morals and relationship to all life, including ecocide and other terrors. Greta Thunberg demands that we listen to the science, while world unity mesh workers and heart math experts reveal the power of heart intelligence. All together with activists for the plastic revolution and extinction rebellion or revolution, these movements will ignite citizen voices in countries around the world, demanding that diversity generators take responsibility and resource allocators wake up to their real job of creating well-being. And the third sector, or civil society, will claim their voice of integration and demand that spirit be welcomed back as guiding force for life-enhancing decisions. We will rediscover the lessons from the end of slavery and hopefully the end of ecocide to see the patterns of decisions, actions, legislation, and governance that we must call into existence in 2020 so that all our targets for 2025, 2035, and beyond can be met. We will heal the deep rifts of trauma that plague our morphogenic fields. We will unlearn the ancient power of shaming and heal it with love to transform the millennials and their children into a force for good. So with that prelude and that intermission, now let us come into the dance, the city dance that allows us to imagine our city as a thriving innovation ecosystem. I mentioned the influence of Elizabeth Sapturis on this dance. I want to now also mention an influence from where I live right now. I moved from Canada two and a half years ago, and I now live in Findhorn Eco Village in Northern Scotland. And so each of these acts has been named after one of the principles that we use in Findhorn to live and act and relate and co-create here in this eco-village. And I believe it applies to cities at all scales. So let us begin the dance. Act one, with deep inner listening. Imagine your city has a sense of its own spirit and discovers its purpose in service to the well-being of its eco-region and the planet. Imagine that your city values its values, history, traditions, and cultures, so that it conserves what works well and teaches it or shares with others, including children, youth, seniors, business, civil society, and city hall. Imagine that your city was open to creative change so that it would replace what does not work well with what can work better and even inspire people to want more change. Imagine that your city discovers the wisdom and resources to create itself as a valued and a valuable city for its citizens, families, organizations, communities, neighborhoods, sectors, state, country, and even the planet. Now let us pirouette to Act Two, where work is love in action. Imagine that your city appreciates the great diversity in the city. From workers who produce value, to innovators and artists who generate diversity, to investors and resource allocators who find and manage resources for worthy projects, to integrators who see the city as alive for humans, as a beehive is for bees. Imagine that your city has an innovation ecosystem that provides it with thriving economies that draw on its history of success in manufacturing value and co-create new opportunities through innovation laboratories at its universities and businesses. Imagine that your city's education and training sectors in conjunction with business and civil society commit to the high school graduation as a minimum target for its children. 
co-op and intern opportunities for youth, and with governments, create the conditions for full employment for all adults. Imagine that all students in your city learn in school, mutual trust and respect, how to dialogue with others, how to cooperate through teamwork with others, and how to coordinate projects and processes to produce life-giving results. Imagine that your city commits to balancing interests for a healthy economy and well-being amongst its citizens through engaging with all the voices of the city in making decisions, managing plans, and achieving goals. From Act Two, let us now take a step forward on the stage and choreograph with the intelligences of nature in Act Three. Imagine that your city has an integrated sustainability plan so that it measures, tracks, and exchanges sustainability data related to energy, water, food, finance, economic production, and climate, and that it shares internally with city stakeholders and externally with other cities in the region. Imagine that your city understands how it adds value to the economy and environment and positions itself strategically in relation to other cities in the region, the eco-region, your nation, and the planet. Imagine that your city has excellent information systems that inform the decisions of not only City Hall, but all businesses, citizens, civil society, institutions including healthcare, education, and the spiritual community, eco-regions, and all government levels, state, regional, and national. Imagine that the management of your city mesh works so well by integrating stakeholders that it is a model for other cities of its size in your eco-region, your nation, your continent, and the world. Imagine that your city's ability to respond to stresses, health, environmental, economic, physical, cultural, social, psychological, at all levels of scale, creates a resilient city because all stakeholders working together in a meshwork create the conditions for everyone in the city to communicate with each other willingly and regularly. Imagine that your city is fully optically, energetically IT wired so that all parts of the city could communicate internally and externally in a healthy way with the rest of the world. Imagine that your city practices transparent governance, accountability and accessibility to information so that people feel safe to care, to share and relate to each other, their places and the planet in a fair way. Imagine that your city balances efficient management with enough extra resources that the city is resilient to change, co-creating with the intelligences of nature. So as we bring our dance to a conclusion, imagine this curtain comes down across our stage and it asks us these questions about thriving human habitats. And these are questions that have arisen in panels that I have moderated on this topic. And I thought I would share them with you so that they could be questions for you too as we move into the next session about implementation. So the panelists ask, where does social habitat fit in the dynamics of city making? Why is that important? Secondly, how are we engaging youth, in fact, multiple generations, to contribute to thriving human habitats? Question three, how do we humans, in fact, how does humanity find the right relation to the more than human world, to the elements, to the plants, to the animal world, to nature, the subtle realms, anything that we consider more than humanity? How do we relate to that? Question four, 
what is the role of impact measurement and feedback loops in human habitats and ecoregions? And how are they active right now? And the fifth question, what have you learned about the art of cross-cultural collaboration and about the challenges of scaling solutions beyond one particular place or demographic in ways that are truly inclusive and sustainable? How can local solutions become globally effective in terms of healing transformation? So I believe the dynamics of generating thriving human habitats and an integral city involves asking more good questions than finding fixed answers. Nevertheless, I have been challenged once I have shared these qualities of an integral city by individual cities and communities to ask, well, how could we implement these? And so what I have gone on to do with various clients is to take these 17 different steps and cluster them into a time frame that seems like it could be workable. Some of the locations have slightly varied the clusters, but nevertheless, let me share them now with you. So what we'll look at is how to implement integral city design in your city and the stages we would go through. In Findhorn, one of the things that we do when we're having any kind of a planning or a strategic or even a tactical meeting is to share a purpose statement. So this purpose statement, I thought I would share with you because it's such a beautiful universal one that gathers together the three acts of our dance. So just imagine that your city as the heart of an eco-region, an innovation ecosystem in that eco-region, reads out this statement at any meeting that they are gathered. We can imagine the human hive of our city co-creating a thriving and loving world, where as a conscious community, we strive to demonstrate a practical spirituality in harmony with nature and play our part to positively transform humanity and the earth. We can imagine using three guiding principles, deep inner listening, work as love in action, and co-creating with the intelligence of nature. So with that intention in mind, let's look at how these steps parse out into different stages. We start with the deep inner listening. The months and the time frame that I have here is I imagined we started in the 11th month of any given year. So that started with 202W. And in the three months that follow, I imagine that what we will do is connect to our city. We'll put out invitations to the four voices to come and join us in formulating a plan to imagine our city. So this stage is very much involved in the deep inner listening to one another. We start by imagining, by naming, or not just imagining, we start that with our city naming, framing, and sharing its spiritual calling in service to the well-being of the eco-region and the planet. So like the spiritual calling that I just read out from Findhorn, I invite every city to invite in spirit as a first step into deep inner listening. Second, your city discovers its values, history, traditions, and culture so that it conserves what works well and teaches that or shares it with others, including children, youth, seniors, business, civil society, and city hall. How do we do that? Well, one of the processes I use is storytelling. Because by telling our stories, our emotional connections to the city, we discover stories we didn't even know that other people had experienced and they share our experiences through the story as a very emotionally bonding, connecting way of seeing our city through values, history and traditions with the life and energy of a story. After that, we can open our city to creative change so that it can replace what does not work well with what can work better and even inspire people to want more change. 
So one of the ways that I do that with cities is to invite into a dialogue the four voices, the citizens, the civic managers, civil society or the third sector and business. And after we have shared the stories from the previous step, we also look at how we can release what we don't want any more of and inspire people by imagining what might happen in the future. I don't know about you, but during the pandemic, these kinds of discussions were ones that we started to imagine because we have been forced to change our whole economy. Even in earlier discussions before the pandemic, we had decided to explore this kind of a process when we were doing a deep adaptation exercise. Here, we were borrowing some of the questions that I have included in the second book, which is to ask, what works well around here? What doesn't work so well? And what do we envision for the future? So with these deep inner listening questions in mind, or inner listening steps in mind, we then move into the, up to the sixth month of our new year. For as we were in the period of deep inner listening, we've given ourselves some months to do the storytelling and dialogue. And now we have to imagine that our city is a prototype of what we're imagining for the future. So we discover the wisdom and resources to recreate the city as a valued and valuable part of the county or the ecoregion or bioregion, something close to you that is a little larger than your human habitat. And we're doing this for the purpose of citizens, families, organizations, communities, neighborhoods, and business sectors. Um, we also, secondly, want to appreciate the great diversity in the region. There is no city or region that does not have much diversity. And like a natural ecology, we must learn to appreciate it, the differences that make a difference, and how to engage the stakeholders in those differences to contribute to concept plans, designs, preparation, and for construction. So here we're starting to imagine what we could co-create together as work, as love in action. Following through on this, we start in the ninth month of this year to build a neighborhood regeneration model. So our First step is to create a model for other city neighborhoods and villages so that they can learn from the model of stakeholder engagement to bring new life to other parts of the city. So as we're doing our work, we're anticipating that we're willing it to share it not only amongst ourselves, but with others. Our city secondly becomes a model for education and the training sector in conjunction with business and civil society to commit to the high school graduation as a minimum target for educating its children, and to create together co-op and intern opportunities for youth, and with governments, create the conditions for full employment for all adults. This was extremely important and strategic step to have before the pandemic. During and after the pandemic, it will become more important than ever that we find and invest in the opportunities for our youth so that they can actually be with us as we create the cities we want for our future. And in doing so, the third step here says that students in school learn mutual trust and respect, how to dialogue with others, how to cooperate through teamwork with others, and how to coordinate projects and processes to produce life-giving results. And I would point out this is not just a nice to have step, but it is vital to actually evolving our species. Elizabeth Satouris, as the evolution biologist, says that we are a very young species. By comparison to the honeybees, honeybees are 100 million years old. Our species is maybe a million if we stretch it. In the timelines that we learn to think about our species having emerged and evolved. And Elizabeth says, as a young species, we have been very competitive. And this is very typical and part of natural systems as the first stage of a species growth to be competitive. But unless we can outlive that stage and become cooperative and collaborative, our species will not continue to exist. So it must seem natural that we teach 
our young people mutual trust and respect, how to dialogue, how to cooperate through teamwork, and through coordinating projects and processes, we develop the capacity for cooperation and collaboration. As we move further into the 11th month of this second year, City Council steps up and commits to balancing interests for the city in regards to a healthy economy and well-being amongst its citizens by engaging all the voices of the city in meshing functions, making decisions, managing plans, and achieving goals. So we are using all of the voices, but we're using, as we can imagine, the master code of care to prioritize how do we serve the needs of the individual, of groups, of the whole place and the planet. And that's why we need City Hall not to be operating as it has been in the past with positional leadership, but to be a integrator and a resource allocator that works with all other voices of the city. As we move now into the next year, in that first quarter of what is our third year of working this plan, we co-create with the intelligences of nature. If you recall, our very first step was to invite in the spiritual intelligence. So it would be good for us to realize that as we have been creating all of the other capacities through deep inner listening and work as love in action, that we must be doing that as we co-create with intelligences of nature as the context of our work. In this stage, our city is part of the council or city counties um, integrated sustainability plan that it shares internally with city stakeholders and externally with other urban centers in the region. Some places already have these sustainability plans, but they have not sort of made them a master plan that enables all the other plans to nest within it. And if a city doesn't have a sustainability plan, it will be time in this stage to start to formulate one and to use the co-creating with intelligences of nature to do that. The second step in this stage is your city understands how it adds value to the economy and positions itself strategically in relation to the county's other neighborhoods. Organizations have long learned to understand the value of supply chains. Our cities need to take that same concept and realize that they will be part of value exchanges, value chains, both within the city across all the voices and between cities and within the eco-region and across multiple eco-regions. The third step is your city has excellent information systems that inform the decisions of not only the city hall, but all businesses, citizens, civil society, and the institutions of healthcare, education, and the spiritual community and all government levels at state, regional, or national. And these information systems must be both formal and informal, and they must be continuous. So we find that the natural ecologies of, say, mycelium networks are constantly communicating with one another, and we must also encourage that and realize that our communication with one another is so invaluable to our consciousness and our cultures. And the fourth step in co-creating with intelligences of nature is the management of our city is so well integrated with all the stakeholders that it becomes a model that other cities want to emulate. So let us aspire again to not only figuring out how to do these things in our own city, but be willing to share them with others. Further in the second quarter of this year, we also have the city's ability to respond to stresses that contribute to well-being within the city and the eco-region and become a resilient urban eco-center. Because people are practicing mutual trust and respect and communicating, as I just spoke, with each other willingly and regularly. So we know that even through some of the lessons of the pandemic, that being cut off and isolated created as much stress as any of the viral stresses that we were faced with. So actually anticipating and knowing 
that we can relieve stress by allowing for healthy communication with one another is part of creating a well and thriving human habitat. When we think of the third quarter of this year, we're going to look at how do we get this optically, energetically IT wired city so that all parts of it can communicate internally and externally with the rest of the world. I want to say that I think this is possible, but it also must be tested in reality so that such wiring is as natural and good for the system as the mycelium wiring is in the natural system. And so probably we're going to have to use some of the biomimicry knowledge that I have borrowed greatly from to think about the integral city in order to create such natural and healthy wiring. In this quarter too, your city designs governance systems with practices for transparent governance, accountability and accessibility to information so that people feel safe to share and care and relate to each other fairly. This is a big stretch, a really big challenge to imagine within the system and the process that I'm talking about because it isn't easy to create new governance systems. But we must start with a willingness to realize that it's possible. And I propose that the master code of care is one of the ways that we create a scaffold to create new governance systems so that we care for self, for others, place, and planet. And we learn in our decisions through governance systems to align the master code of care. And then the last point here, your city demonstrates the balance between efficient management and enough extra resources so that your city is resilient to change. So there you have it, a dance in three acts with a prelude and an intermission, and then a series of implementation steps to translate these vital natural system principles into actual on the ground operational effect in the city of the future. I share these with you in language that imagines it's possible and real today because I believe that as we visualize and envision a city like an integral city of the future, we will attract and invite it into being. And as you're imagining not only cities of the future, but utopias, I would share with you that I don't think this is a utopia. It's obviously not a dystopia, but I believe the principles that are embedded in it are universal and therefore natural and therefore something that we can depend on and use to create thriving human habitats, what I have called integral cities or human hives and what I've come to learn serves Gaia as her reflective organs. Let us create not only Gaia's reflective organs in individual cities, but let's work together in the future to create Gaia's reflective organ system. Thank you.